Hey, you're listening to a Bible Rowdown minicast. And Billy, what's the topic? What are we talking about? Well, in going along with the Romans chapter 4, where Paul lays the groundwork of justification by faith, justification by obeying the gospel, right? The, all the way back in Romans 1, the gospel is the power of God for righteousness to all to all who believe, you know, for in the gospel, righteousness is, is given. And it is, you know, from first to last, as the NIV says, which I love, uh, that people have received justification by faith. They've received righteousness from first to last. And Paul basically makes that argument in Romans chapter 4. And one of the, I think, passages that, like, goes right along with chapter 4 of Romans is Hebrews 11. Uh, because basically it's where Paul focuses strictly on Abraham, mostly with, with a little sidebar of David. <clears throat> the, the writer of Hebrews, whoever that happens to be, goes through basically the whole entire scripture <laughs> to show that this this uh the gospel message uh, righteousness that comes by faith righteousness uh, that comes by walking by faith in the lord and trusting in him was the way things have happened since the very 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 beginning so yeah um there's not been one you know we, we mentioned doing a, a thing on dispensationalism right or or covenants uh, there are multiple covenants uh, we can easily see that in scripture um but there is one gospel message um, there's one, uh, we've, uh, that there's only been, uh, for salvation, uh, one dispensation of grace. It is by faith, by grace through faith that men are saved. By grace through obedience to the gospel of faith that men are saved and credited with righteousness that, that we receive <clears throat> God's approval. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, over and over and over again. The same wording, the same language, all that kind of thing. Yep. I mean, uh, j- just the fact that it starts out. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, men of old gained approval. Right, approval. And, and women as well. We know that they're in here on this list too. But yeah, and then he goes on to explain. Who are these men and how did they gain approval? By faith. They were able- Isn't that interesting? The the idea of we gained approval. I thought that was impossible. We didn't earn approval. Right. We, we were given it. Right. We gained yeah, God's that's, approval. That's the point of, we, we pleased him. Yeah, Romans 4, two, ver, uh, verse 2, verses verse 3. It, we can't boast to God because we earned our righteousness, but we can be given righteousness uh, from God based on our faith. Right. So that's how we gain approval. All right. As Christ said, you know, um, he was my disciple who, who obeys my commandments. Right. That's what God wants mm-hmm. to do. He, he gives us what we need to do and we do it. And by doing it, we gain his approval. You can only do it by faith. That's what Hebrews yep. 11 is about. That's what Romans 4 is about. And and just to show that these people were under the same kind of promise uh, of the gospel message, as first again, verse 2, for by it the men of old gained approval. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain, through which he, being Abel, obtained the testimony that he was righteous. Now, Matt, was Abel doing righteousness on his own? What's the deal here? Well, by faith. By works of the law, no man will be justified. He wasn't made righteous on his own because because of his sacrifice. He obviously offered a sacrifice that was pleasing to God because of his faith. Right. His it came out of his faith, and because of that, he was he obtained the testimony that he was righteous. It was based on his faith, not his work. Right. Verse five. For he he being able obtained the witness that before oh sorry this is sorry enoch enoch uh, for yeah. he enoch obtained the witness that before his being taken up he was pleasing to god yeah we know in verse 6 thankfully and without faith it is impossible to please him because uh, he who comes to god must believe that he is and that he re- is a rewarder of those who seek him so enoch obviously believed believed in god he had faith which is the uh, noun he believed in god and he trusted that God would reward those who seek him. So Right. It says way back in, in Genesis that Enoch walked with God, one of the few, you know, that's pretty mm-hmm. strong words. Yeah, this is these works that he's doing, believing and and uh accepting or trusting that God will, will reward him, those are proving his faith to be alive. Is that uh in verse seven, by faith Noah being warned by God about the things not yet seen in reverence? Reverence is often fear. Is that the same word? Hebrews eleven seven. I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, yes. In reverence, to act cautiously, circum- to beware, to fear, to stand in awe of. Yeah. It's from cautiously. Having, cautious. been, having been moved with fear. Yeah. Taking hold of the fear cautiously. Was it Eulabeomai? Yeah. Something like that? Mm-hmm. Eulabeomai. And notice what it says, though. He became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. 
He obeyed the gospel and was an heir of the righteousness which is, which is according to faith. That is a message that if you trust in God, you will uh, not only be an heir of the righteousness, but you will be an heir of the promises. And then we get to Abraham, who we, we you know, Paul talked about a lot in Romans chapter 4. Talked about, about the inheritance that Abraham was promised. Yep. And we see even Sarah. I mean, it's interesting some of these things that they speak of. You know, uh, by, Sarah herself received the ability to conceive. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive. So if she didn't have faith, then God evidently wouldn't have granted her the ability to conceive. Seems that that's what it's saying. Uh, and, then, and, and speaking of these guys, all these died in faith without receiving the promises. Now, were they in the promises? Were they under the promises? Absolutely. But they had not received the full benefit uh, of those promises. They they knew that this this promise to Abraham that you know he would inherit the earth, that he would be in a, a land that God had promised, he knew that this wasn't a... Uh, a physical land. Whereas it actually says that in this um, chapter, right? I got caught up reading verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the exodus of the sons of Israel and gave orders concerning his bones, which I, I believe he told the the Israel, make sure you take my bones when you leave. Which is interesting. I never picked that up, that he was talking about the exodus, but it was a couple hundred years later, if I remember my timeline right. Yes. Yeah, verse 10, for he, Abraham, was looking for a city which had has foundations, whose architect and, uh, and builder was God, and then verse 16. But as it is, they, this is all these people that, that have been talked about, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So these people, uh, again, they are all looked upon uh, as having been obedient to the gospel, and God, and God through their obedience to the faith, uh, forgave them and credited them with righteousness, all based upon the the new covenant promise, which is uh, enacted by Christ in the death, burial, and resurrection. Yep. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. We know this is the same thing in James two. That's what uh, James points out. Uh, Paul, uh, excuse me, Abraham made the sacrifice or was going to make the sacrifice, and because of that, it perfected his righteous. Uh, it perfected his faith. Man, I just can't talk today. Therefore, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was working with his works, and as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And that the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So that's, again, that's just tying it back. Hebrews 11, tying to James 2, tying to, tying to Galatians 3, tying to Romans 4. Yeah, in Hebrews uh, chapter 11, Matt, what are all these things that these people are doing? Are they works? Uh, yes, but not works of the law right. that earn them anything, right? It, it is it is works of righteousness based on their faith, right? Producing fruit, uh, John fifteen works from yeah. faith, as you said, it perfects their faith. It shows that it is alive. It shows that it's not dead. It's not dying. It's not going to be cut off. Mm-hmm. One of the um, interesting things about this that I always thought was uh, that we don't know uh, in verse. 23, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. I think that's interesting that this verse 23 isn't about Mo, the faith of Moses. It's actually about the faith of his parents, but it doesn't even mention them by name. But it just, it's still that they had faith and it's because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. That Doesn't that sound very unique? No, because it doesn't mention anything there about God at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, it reminds me actually of uh, Pua and the other lady's name in the, in the in Exodus early on. They were the midwives right. of the Hebrews, and they went. And Pharaoh said, "Hey, go kill all the babies," and they and the the midwives came back and said, "Sorry, Pharaoh, the Hebrew women are just popping them out too quick, and they're they're having the babies before we get there." It was a lie, but God was pleased that they lied on uh, to protect His people. Uh, so in the same way, I, them, uh, they were not afraid of the king's edict. They had their fears in the right place. They, they weren't going to fear the, the king. They weren't, whether they were the midwife or the fear uh, Moses's parents fear, don't fear the one who can destroy the body, but fear the one who can destroy body and soul in, in hell. Yeah. I mean, th- to kill your child and hand over your child to be killed. Uh, that is, I would think definitely something that God would convict you of. That your conscience, the law that is written on your heart, would be convicting you of. And if you um, are, are following that through faith, which they were, if according to this, they were following that through faith, uh, they did not allow their child to be born, to be handed over and be killed. Yep. Now, check this out. I just saw this. 
Verse 25, choosing rather, this is speaking of Moses, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking to the reward. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Uh, hmm. Considering the reproach of Christ. In interesting, huh? Yeah. That we have Christ right in there. It's like the word of Christ was gone out into all the earth, according to Romans of 10. Of Christu, of Christ. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I made this point in a Sunday school class last week, or this week, whatever it was. And I explained to these youth guys, John 6, Jesus says, Nobody's seen the Father. Only the one who's come from the Father has seen the Father. And so, you, and we've said this before on the podcast, you have God walking with Adam and Eve, God wrestling with Jacob, God passing by Moses, God in the fire, God leading the uh, Israelites into the promised land. Uh, all of these, if nobody has seen the Father, is the Son. And here you have, within the fire, within the burning bush, was the angel of the Lord. Right. And I always had that imagery wrong, but if that was God, that was Christ. That was the Son. So Moses, fearing God properly, uh, considering the reproach of God the Son, Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. That, that, that's who he was dealing with at the time, uh, if you were to narrow it down to a single person of the Trinity. Right. Cool. The the contrast here is choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God rather to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So that's you know that goes back to blessing, curse, sowing to the flesh, sowing to the spirit, and lust of eyes, lust of the flesh. Right, yeah. right. And you know we we have that His Word, the Word of Christ, as Paul talks about again in Romans ten. You know this is the the Word of uh, Word of Faith. He calls it the word of faith, the word of God. Uh, this is the gospel we are preaching. Later on, he calls it the word of Christ. Then he calls it the gospel, and then he, and he speaks to Romans 10 about the very words of Christ, the very word of faith, the very goes out, and his voice goes out, their voice goes out in all the earth, the words of the end of the sea, uh, in the world. Again, going considering, if somebody is considering the, the word in their heart, they're considering the, the conviction in their heart, that's the reproach of Christ. That's because it's his seed that has been planted in us, according to Matthew 13 and uh, uh, John 15 and all those things. That's the seed. That's the reproach of Christ. And I just read forward to 32 and 33, which I think uh, wraps this, this deal up really well. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell you of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, <clears throat> of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, uh, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release, so that they might obtain a better resurrection. Which is interesting. So they all knew there was a better, mm -hmm. better resurrection, apparently. And others tortured, not accepting their... Oh, uh, and others experienced mockings and scourgings. Yes, also chains and imprisonment. It, it, it did, these all, if you read uh, Peter, First Peter in particular, you, you get the idea that, that the church is in for some serious punishment. And that's, that's what this is describing here. In particular, by faith, all of these guys and gals performed acts of righteousness. Right. And again, you can't do that unless you have faith, unless you are trusting in the Lord. Performed acts of righteousness and obtained promises. Mm -hmm. That's the gospel right there. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, gained approval from who? God. What does that mean? They were justified. Did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. Therefore, it starts off in verse 12. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, Talking about the the cloud in verse in chapter eleven, mm -hmm. let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Be like those guys in chapter eleven, those that great cloud of witnesses who trusted the Lord, who had faith. From the very beginning, from Abel onward, trust like them, run the race like them, be credited with righteousness like them. Yeah, one gospel message, by faith, through faith, all through the, the atoning work of the Son on the cross, by being in him, by being set apart in him, we are able to have works of righteousness, works that come from faith. Just like all the, the heroes of the faith that we can read about, these are all our family, all, all of our family members that we, uh, you know, people tend to like researching their family and their history well this is our history these 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 are our past 
uh, fathers and grandfathers and brothers and uncles and all that stuff. We, we can read all about them in the, in the Word, in the Scripture. It's pretty amazing stuff. Yep, very good. Next time, Romans 5. He'll be there. If you, uh, if you want to ask us anything about what we've talked about today or any time, hit us up on the Facebook group, Bible Rowdown. Email us, BibleRowdown at gmail.com. You can also go to the website. There's an email submission button thing. Uh, you can use that. But hopefully we hear from you. And that's it. Yep. God bless. God bless.